Hello photographers, my name is Spiros Heniatis. This is where I answer your photography questions and we learn about photography together. And this week we're gonna take a break from the composition and do something fun. Not that composition isn't fun because I love it because it helps us make great photos, but I wanna show you a setup, a really fun setup to take water droplet photos that look like this and this and this. Some really fun stuff here and it's actually a pretty easy setup once you get it down. And I'm actually gonna show you a couple of different variations on it. So we're just gonna jump right into it. And you can see I've already got my set up here. So I'm gonna explain everything that I'm using and how this whole thing works. First of all, I've got the receptacle where the water droplets are gonna fall into. And what I've actually got is two baking pans, one longer, wider, shallower baking pan, and then another tall casserole dish. And what I've done is I filled the casserole dish to the brim with water. Now it's inside the bigger pan so that when the water overflows, as it drips and as it fills, it's caught in there and I don't have water running all over my table and all over my floors. And then underneath it, it's not necessary, but I just put a piece of foam core board, one that I don't care about to kind of catch the drops as they're splashing so they're not splashing all over my table. In here I've got blue food coloring and you can use any color that you want but I really like the way blue looks and then what you're seeing holding up my drip setup is actually one of those portable clothes hanging trolleys that you can buy at Walmart or Bed Bath & Beyond or Shopco or pretty much any you know general type store. And I've got my table and I've actually got it underneath the table so I can position things where I want. Now the key is how do you control the dripping of your water. And how I've done that is through the use of an IV bag. Now I can't take credit for the idea of the IV bag. I saw it in another video on YouTube and I swear to God I bookmarked that video but I cannot for the life of me find it. So if you know who created that video please let me know because I want to give credit where credit is due. And I actually got the IV bag and the hosing off of Amazon and it cost maybe $15 for everything together. Now the cool thing about the IV bag is you actually have a regulator and this allows you to control the speed of the droplets and this is important as you'll see when we get into shooting. And up here I've got my IV bag. Now you need your water source higher than your drip point so that gravity will help things flow. And all I did here was tape a long board and put a nail in that board to hold my IV bag up above my drip point. Now I've got my camera on my tripod over here and I've got a flash in this 18 inch softbox and I actually made this softbox myself. I have a flash in the softbox and the flash is being triggered by Pocket Wizard radio triggers. Now you can use any radio triggers. I use Pocket Wizards but Yognuo makes very cheap ones. If you just go on Amazon or eBay and search for radio flash triggers you'll find a multitude of options. And my Canon 580EX2 flash is set to 1 16th power. You want it set to a lower power because we're going to be using the burst mode on the camera. Getting a good drip shot is all about time timing. You have to take many, many shots in order to capture the few good ones because you're simply letting the drips fall and you're shooting and you're waiting for the timing to be just right to capture the great looking drip. So this is set to 1 16th power and my camera is set to burst mode and I've actually got it set to ISO 3200 because I'm using a black backdrop for this shot. As I change the variations, I'll explain how I change my settings. And I'm set to 1 250th of a second, which is the sync speed of my camera and finally I'm set to f16 of an aperture. So I've got a high ISO because I want to capture the detail and the color of the drops as they're splashing against the black background. I'm using f16 because I want great depth of field. Now the drops they splash all over the place and the greater your depth of field the better chance you're going to get a shot that's in focus throughout. And I forgot to mention I'm using my 60 millimeter macro lens. So I'm using a macro lens but you could also use a zoom lens and have the camera back further and zoom way in on the subject. So you don't necessarily need a macro. And then I'm using my sync speed because I just want the flash to be the light source for this shot. So what I'm gonna do is turn the drip feed on. And I've got the hose taped to the crossbar up here, well above the tray of water. Because the further the droplets have to fall, the more splash you're gonna get. And you want more splash because more splash makes for a better photo. And the other thing is you want to have a relatively fast 
fast drip speed because the more drops that are falling down, the more likely you're to have collisions of droplets together, which is going to give you those great splashes that look like this, as opposed to shots that just look like this, where the water's splashing up, but it just splashes up in a column and falls back down. So you want lots of fast drips that are colliding with each other. And finally, my backdrop is black for this particular shot. Now what I've got back there is just a piece of black poster board, and I've got the camera aimed here, and we're all almost ready to shoot, but we need to do one thing, which is pre-focus the camera. So let me show you how to do that. Now you could try to pre-focus the camera on the droplets as they're falling, but I guarantee you that will be an exercise in frustration because the subject will be constantly moving and you're not going to get a good solid lock on focus. So what you want to do is take something and lay it across the top of your drip vessel down here. And what I'm going to use is just a ruler and I'm going to turn the drip on to a slow drip flow. And what I'm going to do is position the ruler so that the drops are falling right on the edge of the ruler. And then I'm going to focus the camera on the ruler. Because the ruler stays fixed, the camera's going to be able to lock focus on it. All right, I've got focus locked in. And what I'm going to do now is turn the lens to manual focus. And I'm going to take the ruler out of here because we don't need the ruler anymore. We've got focus locked. And now the only thing left to do is set the speed of my drip. And I'm going to turn it up so it's a relatively fast drip. You don't want a stream of water. You want a series of drips. So watch as it's falling out of the nozzle and just use the regulator to control the speed until you're not quite but almost to a stream, which I've got right here. So you can see the water droplets and you can see how fast they're dripping. So now what we do is we just shoot and we keep shooting until we get a shot that we like. And when the buffer on the camera gets full, I just wait a few moments and then I shoot some more and I keep doing that and I review my shots until I get something that I like. And this is a matter of time and patience because with something like this, you can't predict when the shot's going to be ready. So you just need to take shots in burst mode and check them out and look until you get something that you like. So I'm going to take a look at these shots here and we're going to see what they look like. And I see that I got a couple of shots that I really like. Now I'm going to switch setups and I'm going to show you the alternative options. So I've got the new setup here and the drip setup has not changed, but I have changed the position of my light and my camera settings. So what I've done is I've taken the light off of the stand that was off here on the right and I've moved it behind the drip setup. So the light is going to light up the water from the rear and it's going to create a pure white background. Backdrop. And the flash power has not changed. It is still at 1 16th power. But what I did do is take my ISO down from 3200 to 200. Because if I had it up at 3200, everything would be blown out. I now have a direct light source shining into the camera and I needed to take the ISO down. And with everything set, we're going to do the same thing. Turn on the drip feed and we're going to shoot in burst mode. So let me take a look and see what kind of shots we got here. So I've got some really good shots from that set and I've actually made the changes for this last variation, but you cannot see what I've done because it's inside the softbox. The shot that I'm going for is something like this right here and you notice that red light throughout the entire scene. What I've done is taken a colored gel and on my flash inside the softbox, I put that colored gel over the light like this. So when that flash fires, the gel is going to color the light red and it's going to fill the scene with that red color. So once again, let's take some shots here and see what it looks like. And another thing I want to point out is my camera is very close to this drip setup. It's actually getting wet. And the Canon 60D is a weather sealed camera, so I'm okay with that. But if your camera is not weather sealed, you're going to want to have the camera back further away from this setup, or you're going to want to protect your camera. And protecting it is actually pretty easy, and it's super, super cheap. All you need to do is get yourself a Ziploc bag, one of the gallon sized ones, and cut one of the corners off and then get yourself a rubber band. And what you do is you take the whole bag and put it over your camera and then rubber band the bag right around the barrel of the lens. All the bag will be around the camera protecting it. The lens will still be exposed so that you can take some photos. All right guys, that's all I've got for you this week. I hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you have any questions about my setup, the drip photography or how to do this, let me know down in the comments. And while you're down there, do me a favor. Let me know, do you have a camera that's weather sealed or not? I'm very happy to have my my Canon 60D be weather
they're sealed. Now, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel. If you really like this video, do me a huge favor and share it with your friends. But no matter what you do, get out there and take some damn photos, and I'll see you next week. This is the most difficult part of the whole thing, carrying this without dumping water everywhere.